Hey everybody and welcome here to the channel here on Take Daily. Hopefully you have a great day wherever you are in the world and uh, let's dig to this the juicy story like physically literally dig into this because we're talking about crash testing which is a serious subject here and uh, before I go any further um, talk, talk from this article from Car and Drive and written by Sebastian Blanco as always I encourage you guys to read it and uh, check it out. Uh, it's, it's a great article basically it's in details as far as what's going on with the uh, Institute uh, Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Uh, so anyways, I'll have a link to the start in the description below. So go ahead and check it out. But let's get to the point. So what's going on? Crash. Have you ever had a crash? You know, someone had a car crash. It's a very traumatizing and, it's, you know, it's just, hopefully they're okay. You know, obviously it's a very serious subject. So what's going on with the IIHS is they're changing their stand in which they test cars which they haven't changed since 2003 and what's going on is basically long story short they're directing the barrier the object in which it crashes into the vehicle or the vehicle crashes into to simulate real life whatever that means as far as the crash because you know crash is very random so you have to kind of give them some level of margin right they, they can't mimic everything you know from a deer to a tree to a big rig to Whatever it may be. So for now, at least they made the standard kind of more difficult. As you can see, the barrier is a little bit higher. And when that results in it, results in the imprint in which the object smacking the car is to be a little bit higher and affecting the, cement, the structural integrity of the vehicle. So basically, it's basically like, it's kind of like hitting an SUV. So before the this barrier was a little bit lower, so when it hits the car, it didn't cause as much damage. If... I mean, looking at this picture, there's a lot of substantial amount of damage. But uh, since they changed this rating, a lot of vehicle got a different rating. And um, reading straight from the article, saying insurance is due for highway, uh, highway safety, continues to roll out new side impact, the short version. It may be time to rethink smaller vehicles. And they're going to say, anyway, only the 2022 Subaru out, uh, Outback was given a top score for good. While the Chevy Malibu, Nissan Altima, and Toyota Camry were already poor in a new test. Um, again, I always tell, I always say this: don't take this more than what it looks. I mean, of course, some vehicles are d designed poorly, but I don't look at cars in a way that, oh, am I gonna crash in my car? Uh, crashing is so uh, somewhat random. This is kind of gives you an idea, but it shouldn't be the. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's it's. I'm gonna fast forward here because a lot of talking, but I do like it when I show the actual damage, and it is very violent. Like when you see the impact, it's quite violent. There's a side grenade, which I really like. To be honest with you, I think um, if you see it, oh, let me close all this. So this is side grenade. If you're not familiar with it, when you get hit in the car, all the stuff deploys on the bottom. It's kind of meant to protect you. Um, it's no matter how you look at it, it's a uh, very violent, but that's the Camry, which I suspected the Camry will do much better. So if you look at the Camry and, and that's how it looks like, boom, and that's simulating SUV. Holy way. Mm. That's for me is hard to look at because you know, <laughs> the, there's a lot of energy just went into that cabin and it's saying it did poorly, meaning that the imprint of that energy the imprint of that machine just pretty much hit the occupant inside and ow and i'm doing this at 37 miles per hour ow you know it's that's rough uh showing you over here the rating the same sprout back g means good a means acceptable and means marginal and p means poor and if you look at the bottom the camera got overall rating of poor the structural safety was acceptable head and neck injury was good so what did it fail on? Pelvis. Oh, and I think that's the one that kind of sent it the red flag. Because if it didn't have the pelvis issue, it would have been fine. But uh, I guess the because the impact is much higher now, it's affecting the pelvis. That's just my assumption. Ow, that's so violent. And this gentleman who's talking about it. And oh, man, look at this. Oof. That is rough that's rough to look at and rough to watch again i have a link to this video you can check it out and go ahead and uh, see it all of it but um uh, it goes on saying that in the late 2021 iihs used this new side impact crash test on a uh, in a batch of 20 small suvs on those tested only one the mazda cx5 scored a good rating uh, again i i'm i don't buy car based on the, the crash safety um 
I mean, you could look at life as saying that I'm going to get hit and at some point. I, I don't know. It's it's up to your personal discretion to say, okay, what vehicles you want to buy as far as safety. My my perspective of it is not to be in that place in the first place. Can you help it? If somebody running a red light and you're standing still and somebody hits you from the side, well, it is what it is. I don't know at that point. I can't really talk about that. That's something that's not on anybody's control but what is in your control is to know okay how did i fare when i get hit by a large object that's off the ground a little bit higher off the ground that's what iihs is doing so i salute them for doing so i think it's important to know what happened when my car got hit by an, pretty much an suv and, uh, and i hope that this test is gonna give those car companies uh, basically reinforce the doors and again um if you look at the, all these cars, they're built with standards. They are obviously, then it's not like they're built uh, with poor standards, like Chevy Malibu, the Nissan Altima, and the Toyota Camry. It's not like built substandard. It's just the test has changed, and they're going to keep, uh, obviously, they're going to update it because it's going to affect sales. A lot of people are going to look at this test data and say, oh, no, I don't want to buy this one or that one. They scored poorly. I want to buy the Outback, which scored better. But here's the thing about the Outback the Outback is higher off the ground. So, what is this test? Don't do the Outback, do the Legacy. So, when I'm looking at this data, man, if you put the Legacy up here, who knows what the score would be? Probably everything would be overall rating, eh, acceptable, marginal. The Outback is off the ground, so when you look at a crash, if you're not familiar with it, if you ever get a chance to go and look at like cars or like a body shop or junkyard or whatever and see a car actually being dissected as far as like the door, if you see a door standing on the, I don't know, someone replacing a car door, you notice in the door itself, on the side of the door, there's a bar, there's a metal bar. And that bar is designed for it to protect you. It's kind of like a roll, it's like a roll cage. If you see a race car that has a roll cage, the door has that built in it. Now, if the question is whether this impact that we witnessed, the impact of this, you know, the, what, what do you want to call this? I don't know, the barrier or the truck or the SUV. It's whether it did hit that bar or hit above the bar. So, you know, I mean, I'm putting it in a layman term, but the, all of them have that bar. It doesn't care what car it is that must have it. It's designed for that purpose. If you don't have that bar, then your door is just made out, out of very thin metal, and that thing will go right through it. Obviously, there's a B pillar. A B pillar is this thing. We call it a B pillar because it's like a letter B. And um, this is the B pillar right here. <laughs> that little rod right here. Do you see that? So that thing right here is designed, it's very sturdy, and it's designed to take impact, but also the door has in it a structural design to withstand some level of impact, okay? Again, no car is safe. If you're doing 100 miles an hour and you lose control, goodbye, have a nice day, sir. If you're doing 60 miles an hour and hit a wall, good night. Uh, again, it's, it's the sudden stop that, that kills you, okay? So whatever speed you do, and I can't imagine anything above 5 miles an hour when it comes to a sudden stop, I'm very sure it'll be very traumatic. So, um, having said that, there is a design in the vehicle. It, its job is to somewhat absorb some of that energy, because if it's that bar that's not there, then whatever's hitting you, the only thing stopping is that B pillar, which might crumble. Cars are safer much much safer than they used to be back then but still we're looking at this bar right here and i'm assuming that the camry maybe the bar may be a little bit lower i don't know specifically about this model the brand new one i don't know about the older one i, I can tell you from like the 2005 and three the older cars i had i know what that bar is and it's low I mean, it's, it's really not that high. I mean, imagine an SUV hitting you. Um, I can imagine that's what significantly caused this data to be kind of skewed toward a vehicle that sits a little bit higher. Again, the Outback sits higher. The Outback, if you look at the ground clearance on the Outback and you compare it to the Camry, you can see the Camry is way lower on the ground. So I'm kind of calling BS a little bit on the whole graph right here. again i do believe these numbers are correct but this outback is a different kind of a vehicle when you look at the sonata and the jetta and the accord and the camry and ultimate and malibu it, all the sonata and the jetta and accord and the camry and ultimate and malibu would all what they have in common is there are a four-door sedan that's low to the ground uh, not that low okay i'm not saying they're slammed they're not an airbag and a slam but they're lower they're what do you call it, a regular sedan where an outback is kind of a crossover sport utility-esque kind of a vehicle i mean the, the clearance look at the clearance this thing could easily drive again look at a picture it's driving in a ranch or 
I'm just assuming, but it, it has a clearance. And I believe that clearance is what allow it to uh, receive a better rating. And he's a gentleman standing right there. And again, he, he's talking about the occupant safety. He's talking about the airbags. The, and you've got some people that are obviously right there. And you can tell like how much it was pushed in. But again, the doors do also help a lot. So I do believe it has something to do with it. And you can see the moment of impact here. And uh, bam. Ow. Oh, God. This is so violent. It's so hard to watch. Oof. You know, if... Um, if you've been in a car accident, you're, I'm pretty sure you're quite uh, traumatized from this. But uh, again, I don't understand what I've shown you. All these cars are very low to the ground. They don't have enough uh, like clearance like the uh, the Subaru does. Oof. Man, and this kind of gives you an idea. If you modify your car and you do stuff to it, just make sure that you uh, bolt everything down. Look at the look at the movement. I mean, we're talking about the steering wheel moved. Oof. Oof, wow. Ouch. This is hard to watch. This truly is hard to watch. Uh, but again, it doesn't change from my point that this car is off the higher off the ground. I'm not saying it's not well designed. Good job for Subaru for making it, uh, for designing it and making it sturdy. But it's still, it's a little bit off the ground. Okay, let's just agree that uh, the point of impact on this car varies because it's, it's geometry the way it is. And um, so let's see, did I talk about it? And uh, didn't mention it. I'm surprised I didn't mention it because I know that the car and driver is familiar with this. So let's say... Uh, okay, so when it should be rating, was wagon on the na 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 Hmm. I guarantee they're going to be talking about it because this point I brought up, which is they're not testing, for example, the legacy. Why you're not testing the legacy? Uh, da -da 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 -da. So moving on, SUV, much heavier, da da da. Hmm. So I guess they didn't test the legacy because. It, why test a legacy when you could obviously have the outback and gives you this great performance i'm surprised about that the outback given a good score which have malleable poor rating did you just oh here you go subaru four door sedan the legacy was not included in this batch of testing hmm interesting i don't know why they did that i mean subaru has a great you know uh ratings as far as like crash oh they, they pride themselves on that i think subaru and volvo at least they're the co commercial wise they, they tend to do so and it shows in the numbers though both cars are quite safe vehicle uh but somehow they didn't they didn't test the legacy i guarantee you they tested the legacy would not get the same score for sure i'm not saying it's the bad car but it probably have a little bit more damage than uh, because again this is lifted off the ground um how about the honda accord i'm curious honda accord she got a marginal rating Let's see the Accord. Marginal. Okay. Uh, the Jetta did acceptable. The Sonata did acceptable. Good job, Hyundai. The Camry, again. Um, I think the only reason the Camry did quite bad is because the pelvis. That's the only one that got really bad on the pelvis. Uh, everyone else did okay on the pelvis. That's kind of odd. Why the pelvis specifically for the Camry? This is something for the Toyota engineers to chew on that one. Uh, the Nissan Ultima. Everything was all right, but it was unacceptable for the torso and the pelvis and the head. Basically, the whole body got hit. Oh, and the, yeah, the structural safety cage, the way we were looking at when the car gets hit, that thing got did really bad on the Ultima and on the Malibu. And I think that's their demise. That's why they have really bad data as far as the occupants inside, the driver's side. That's basically most amount of intrusion because the... Uh, obviously the intrusion will cause the damage the camry the intrusion was fine it was acceptable the accord was marginal but yet it had no pelvis issue where the toyota camry had pelvis issue again that's a standard test okay this is not i get real life will be completely different there's so many different factors in real life what will i mean looking at this behemoth this is a heavy car i mean but you you would imagine in real life oof look at the hit it's rough to see how fast that thing's going. Ow. That's the Jetta. Ow. And that's accident, of course, do happen if you drive in the city and got or anywhere. I mean, if all it takes is one person not paying attention and uh, oof. That's hard to watch. Anyway, so I hope this uh, kind of gives you a heads up and idea. The IHHS are changing their safety rating and are updating it to include 
basically being hit on the side by an SUV. And as you, the consumer, have access to this data and do check it out, I think it's very interesting to read, especially if you own these vehicles. Now, I'm not saying to rush into your dealership and exchange your car and say, oh, no, I don't want you know one of those cars that didn't do well. Just understand this is based on a crash. They're updating their crash rating. And uh, I, as I still believe that the best way to avoid a crash is to pay attention to the road do your best of course an accident is an accident we are unable to control our whole environment around us so um just be careful out there be safe out there and uh, do watch the road and uh, uh, I can't give you any tips how to avoid an accident. I personally almost went through a lot of accidents. You know, I'm, I'm an old person. I've been driving since I was, geez, a kid, literally. And uh, um, how do you avoid accidents? I don't know, man. It's just kind of like swerve out of the way. I, 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 I am old. My head is on a swivel when I'm driving. I'm like a fighter pilot, you know, like a World War II fighter pilot. And I'm just like the Red Baron. I'm just looking up, down, right, left uh i'm really focused when i'm driving i know not everybody has the that the i don't say the, not everybody can like me that makes sense you know we're, we're all different people but when i drive i'm driving so if there's a car coming from the side at least i will be looking at it. i will see it i i'll say this and watch me today i'll drive and the car will hit me blind spot and of course that happens you know of course that stuff happens do your best just check out your environment put yourself in the right spot what i mean by that is just kind of I don't know, when you're driving, just kind of look around and, uh, I don't know, I'm pretty sure you know all the safety tips, but uh, just be safe, you know, I'm just saying this out of love, I hopefully, I don't want to, you know, it's sad to see these things, because when you see it, you understand there's a human being in there and they get hurt and it's really love to watch, so uh, hopefully uh, manufacturers keep, uh, you know, watch, see this and update it so we have a safer vehicle out there on the road, but... Uh, for the rest of us out there, just always be safe when you're driving. Pay attention, you know, uh, stay away from, I don't know, you see some guy driving like crazy, just let him do his thing, stay out of the way. Uh, look right and left before they cross the street, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so stay safe out there and uh, stay safe out there. And I'll see you next time. Alright, take care. Bye-bye.